is my 1987 GMC Jimmy, uh, full size, Sierra Classic Edition. I purchased this truck in 1994, so uh, 21 years ago. It was my first vehicle I purchased myself, and uh, it's been uh, a loving companion for a long time. But I wanted to document a little bit of what I've done to the truck, a little bit of uh, what I've been building, uh, show you some of the details on it, and talk to you about the direction I might be going with it. So, um, yeah, let's jump in and get started. The backstory on this truck was it was my daily driver for years. Um, I had this thing all the way through high school and all the way through college, and daily drove it forever and it just became not the most practical vehicle to be driving every day and became relegated to uh, basically just um, off-road adventures, camping and that sort of thing. And then as my family grew, it became less and less practical and sat on the side of the road basically dying. So uh, you'll hear my kids in the background, they're a big part of why I've uh, jumped into this build. Uh, I wanted to make a truck that uh, reliable, dependable, um, capable, safe, uh, that we can go camping, that we can go exploring, we can go on big family road trips together, um, and I've kept that in mind the whole time while I've been doing the build. So I'm going to detail a little bit about what I've done, um, things with the truck that I'd like to uh, highlight are that I've got a really nice clean straight body. Um, it's a California truck, so rust was never really that much of a condition uh, or worry. And so as a result, I've got a really nice canvas to work with. Um, but yeah, let's dive in and I'll show you what I've got. So as I mentioned earlier, I have uh, been building this uh, 87 K5 for about, sorry, 87 GMC Jimmy, uh, Sierra Classic Edition. And uh, I've been building this for about a year. I've had this truck since high school. I love this thing. Uh, it's, it's my baby. Um, but it has been slowly dying as it sat outside. So, I resurrected it, slowly been building on it. And in the coming months, I'll be giving you some highlights on some of the various products that I've put on, um, why I've done them, what I liked about them, challenges that I ran into building them and whatnot. So as you can see there's a there's been quite a lot of uh, work done on the truck to to improve weak points, to change some of the areas that I saw as problematic and uh, and yeah. So uh, look for that coming up. I hope it's all helpful. In this video I'd like to highlight the DIY 4x high steer hydro uh, mount where I put it, its construction, fabrication, and usefulness in my build. So uh, here it is in its glory. This is the DIY 4x ram assist mount for crossover and well actually for high steer. Um, I'll get into a, a little bit more of the why I needed it, what it does. Um, it's installed in a minute here but I just wanted to highlight the product itself so you can see a little bit of its construction, see the objective that it's trying to accomplish, and uh, bask in the glory of its uh, overall burliness. So that is the product, and uh, let's talk a little bit about why we might... Foremost, let's look at the steering system on um, a solid axle one-ton truck. Uh, interestingly, GM placed the tie rod on, these, on the knuckles of the axle located the, the tie rod right in front of the of the axle assembly itself. Pretty safe, pretty secure position for general all-around driving, but quite honestly not the best solution for anything uh, off-road. It was very vulnerable, often bent, which would affect your toe, uh, affect steering, um, affect general handling of the vehicle itself. Um, then the other option was the, um, the drag link or pitman arm or steering assembly that was off the steering box, uh, once you lift the truck, it becomes problematic in its angles and efficiency of the box. Essentially, the box isn't able to put out enough pressure to turn the output shaft to get the linkage to pull appropriately, and you end up with a steering system that binds. 
So ways of alleviating this have been uh, around for a while. The most popular being a crossover and high steer system. So what that does is it's going to take your, steer your steering, which is traditionally found along the front of the axle, and it's going to move it both above the axle. So you have two variations here. First would be crossover steering. Crossover is essentially when you take your steering arm or drag link and put it above the axle. That is where it's mounted to your pitman arm and all up out of the way nice and clean. The second part would be the crossover or high steer, sorry. The high steer is when you take your tie rod, which would have been located between these knuckles, and you put it up above. Both of these require a uh, high steer crossover knuckle. I've gone with the DIY 4x option on these. Uh, a couple reasons I'll give you here in a second, but uh, obviously that's the knuckle on the passenger side. And you'll see the knuckle over here on the driver's side. Um, I specifically chose the DIY 4x as they are about a half an inch taller than you will see with ORD and some other options out there. Um, I like that and the fact that it is going to give you clearance over your spring packs and your leaf plates. And um, shoot, they're just burly units. So once again, Kurt does not mince uh, mess around when building these things. Also, the angle on the pitman arm, sorry, on the on the top knuckle, steering knuckle arm, is nice and the fact that it keeps your uh, your tie rod and drag link all centered. So those are the two options here. As you can see, I've got the, the DOM tie rod, DOM steering arm, drag link, call them what you will. And yeah, that is what uh, has transpired here. You'll see what's nice is it pulls everything up, out, uh, of the way, no, nothing hanging, dangling down, going to get caught up on uh, the, the differential is basically the lowest point. So to bend that drag link would be exceedingly difficult. Other problem introduced when you add suspension lifts to these vehicles is you're often incorporating a much larger tire and with that comes increased load, increased resistance, increased weight that the traditional steering system just isn't uh, capable of accommodating. So, people introduce what's called hydraulic assist, where you have a gearbox that is going to, a steering box, that is going to be hydraulically enabled to drive a cylinder that will push on your steering arm to either assist it or retract it, depending on which way you're turning. Um, very efficient system. Um, does run substantial pressure, generally in the four to 6,000 PSI range, I believe. So it is important to get it set up properly, get it set up correctly. Um, but once they're in, they are a lifesaver. Your car, you go from wrestling with your steering to having a, a, a steering system that is quite a dream to drive. So I'm gonna focus a little bit today on, um, on why I used the Kurt, uh, Kurt's DIY 4x um, tower assist as, uh, and what problems it solved for me. So let's dive under and take a look. I'm gonna show you the PSC RAM, uh, show you its mounting points, and talk about why I went that way. So let's take a look. Like I said in the previously, that I've located my steering all up above the axle. Nice and neat, out of the way, good angles, um, efficiency in the pump, uh, basically making the best use of, uh, of our steering power, hydraulic pressure that we've got. So here is where I have located my PSC RAM. Give you a better shot of that. You can see the RAM is mounted completely parallel to the steering arm, the drag link. Um, what that's gonna do is gonna take the hydraulic force of the RAM firing and drive it along the arm where it's mounted to this tab and bracket, giving me hydraulic assist. So what this is going to do is just dramatically reduce the steering pressure and uh, a needed force to steer, uh, which is important. May not be that much of an issue when you roll around the street, uh, but you get anywhere where there's rocks or resistance or anything competing, just normal steering, low speed, um, you're going to be very grateful to have something like this or some variation. 
So the challenge obviously is how to mount this ram um, because there's certain places to put it where you're going to get most of the efficiency. The ram is going to put out some tremendous force. So you have to be careful in how you mount it so as to avoid putting it at an angle that could quite possibly bend your tie rods, bend your steering arm, because uh, like I said before, putting out some serious PSI. So this is what I chose to do, was to go with the, the DIY tower mount. So what this, is, what this does that's very nice is you can see the height of it corresponds perfectly with my steering arm. So there is no deviation in height. The travel of the, of the ram corresponds to the travel of the arm. I'm not dealing with any changing angles. The heim joints are in there, as you can see, but not really doing that much movement and shaking when it's actually driving. So the DIY 4x, I believe this unit is available on his website. Um, it just solves so many problems, it really does. Cut and shaped to uh, just sit right up on the axle tube itself, uh, particularly Dana 60, I think it'll work on other axles too. Um, forgive my welds, I'm, I'm not the best welder yet, I'm still learning that, um, that art form. But you can see that uh, just sitting right there, bolts up right here, everything's clean and neat. Uh, what I really liked about it too was uh, it was able to take my uh, cylinder and move it uh, even more protected up and out of the way. Uh, hoses included. You'll notice that my hoses all travel, my hydraulic lines travel back up and out of the way. Uh, anything I can do to, uh, to reduce uh, rock strike or abrasion or snags or anything that could reach up and, and damage either the cylinder or the, or the hoses is appreciated in my book. So um, yeah, that is a quick tutorial, um, analogy, whatever what you want to call it, walkthrough. Uh, I welcome comments, I welcome questions, I welcome critiques. Uh, I'm learning as I go. I just wanted to highlight some, some great products that have made my build of this truck um, much, much easier. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it and uh, Hopefully I'll have some more coming up for you guys later. Thanks.